Hey YouTube, this is Brandon at the Edge Pro, and we're going to wrap up our Classic 76 series today, talking about changing the lever and the link primarily. We're also going to look at what other parts are going on up there in the front of that clipper, as well as oiling and greasing the clipper and what needs to happen there. So let's go on over to the repair desk and get your clipper tuned up. All right, we're over here at the repair desk, and today we are going to talk about changing the drive lever and the link and then oiling our, oiling the parts that are up here, our moving parts that are up here in the front, um, and we're going to see how to do that. So, first thing we're gonna do is take these screws out. For this repair, you're gonna need a number one screwdriver, uh, Phillips head screwdriver primarily, and then a number two, or a number one flathead screwdriver is going to be beneficial for getting around some of the parts later on. Um, and these screws here, depending on the generation of clipper that you have, they might actually be a number two Phillips head bit. Uh, on this generation, this is one of the newest generations of it, the screw that holds this plate on is actually the exact same screw that also holds the hinges on. Uh, so same screwdriver, same process for getting in there. So we're gonna go ahead and take those screws out now. All right, so we've got the cap off now, and this clipper has very little use on it, so everything's still pretty clean but you end up having quite a bit of grease here on the cap. And then in here is where we're gonna be working. So, to find some parts here, this red part here is called the lever. This silver part here is called the link. And then this yellow part here, and it goes down into that side and there, is gonna be called the gear. Those are the main three parts that we're gonna be working with today. So the first thing we're gonna do is take and just slide your number one slotted screwdriver under that lever and we're just gonna pry it up out of there like that. Now that's gonna make things very simple for us to get to this link and pry it up. And a lot of times that's gonna come up, if, let's see if I can turn it to the side here, that's gonna bring the gear with it. And that's okay, we'll pull that gear out one thing you wanna watch for is that a lot of times there's going to be a washer on the bottom of this gear. The washer in this clipper actually stayed down in the bottom around that post rather than staying to the gear. It's okay that it stays down in there or that it stays on the gear. We just wanna make sure that all of the parts get back into the clipper when we're done with the repair. So the parts we're concerned about right now in this repair is going to be the drive lever and the drive link. So what happens with this lever over time as we've been clipping and doing haircuts is that the corners on either side here will start to round off rather than having a nice corner finish like that. And that's going to start reducing the stroke of the blade because instead of being able to throw the blade all the way to the right and left, now you're only going to get partial stroke. Because of that, your blades are gonna not perform the way they're supposed to, even on freshly sharpened blades. So we wanna replace that part fairly often. Depends on how much you're clipping, um, clipping and doing haircuts, but uh, usually we're gonna end up replacing those probably about every two to three months. It's gonna be a time that's gonna reduce a lot of vibration. It's gonna reduce uh, noise. It's also gonna give you the best the best cutting action of your blade. So it's a good repair to stay up on. It's very similar, uh, almost exactly the same, but a different engineering style as the Andis blade drive that we talked about uh, in our series on the five-speed clipper. This piece here is kind of messy with some grease on it, but this is the link. And this links between the gear eccentric and the drive lever. And what happens is this gear actually starts to oval out the inside of this metal link. This gear is a fiber gear, but it doesn't wear out, but this, it doesn't wear out very often, should I say, but the inside of this link does, and it'll start to oval out. And then when it's sitting in the clipper, you end up having a lot of play going on here versus it being very tight and having no room to move. So typically whenever we change the drive lever right here, we're gonna change the link as well. The gear is only ever gonna need changed 
if you turn your clipper on and it's running, but the blade isn't moving, usually that's gonna be the gear. It's kind of a pass-fail uh, part in there. So we don't worry about that too much. So we're gonna talk about reinstalling these now and other parts that we need to look at here in the clipper. So another part that we're gonna look at is if you look right at the end of, this is the armature, this metal piece right here. And right at the end of this, you can see where there's a little black piece that's not burgundy. That is a tiny little plate that's in there. And we wanna pull that out and check on it. So what we do to pull it out is we're gonna, this armature is on a spring, so it can spring down into the clipper like that. And what we're gonna do is stick this at the top of the armature and pry up. And that's pretty hard to see from that distance, so I'll try to come over here and do it. But you can see I've pried it up and out of the slot. What we're looking for on this piece is any damage or wear. And so if we look, let's see if I can find the camera here. There it is. See that dimple right in the middle there? That's the start to the, some damage that's building up on this clip, on this piece. And so a lot of times what we'll do is we'll flip it around so the armature is now pushing on this side of it versus the other side of it. And then we'll put it back in. Needle nose pliers are gonna be helpful for this. We'll take and wedge that piece in that little slot that's made for it. And you can usually get it started about halfway down and then push it the rest of the way down. The screwdriver or the pliers work well. And that part of the repair is done. The next thing we wanna do is oil the, or grease up the clipper. We don't need very much grease in here. The total amount of grease we're gonna use is gonna be a little bit more, probably about the size of a marble actually. So let's get rid of some of this old grease, which is still very clean. Like I'd mentioned earlier, there's not a lot of wear on this clipper. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our grease into that gear shaft and squeeze until it starts to. Let's see. There we go, comes out of the top hole. Then there's actually another hole in there. So what I'm gonna do is set this down on the desk and plug that top hole with my finger and give it a squeeze until I see grease coming out of the bottom hole. And if we look down in there, you can see it coming out of the bottom hole down there as well. So now we're gonna put our gear back in and we are going to put a little bit of grease along the gear and the armature there. Whoops, sorry, I was running off the camera there for you. And then we're going to just set the link right on top of the gear where we found it. And then our drive lever, we have to line up two holes. The first hole is this main one here, the pivot point. And then we have to turn it to line up that bottom hole that's going to sit on the link. And then it's going to lock down. Something you can do to test your old parts versus your new parts is you grab that that lever and try to move it side to side. These parts are new parts. You can see there's very little to no movement and most of that movement's coming from me, <laughs> but not, almost and nothing in the clipper there. Then we're gonna take and put our lid back on. A lot of times I'll go ahead and just clean up this extra grease, clean up the extra grease that's on our lid as well. We're gonna put our lid back on put our two screws in, and that's gonna complete the repair. And that's a simple tune-up here on our Oster 76 and A5 clippers. If this has been helpful for you, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our page for more content like this. And we thank you for your support.